starting from my life here in America, um, I came here with my parents and my brother when I was 13 years old. My mom waited. Um, so she originally applied for a green card through her family when she was 13. And then she got a response. It was approved when she turned 21. So then at that point, she had to reapply um, when my grandmother became a U.S. citizen and add her husband later on. And then she had my brother and then me. So really at 31 is when she really applied for the green card um, to come here with her husband and then the two kids, me being one of them. Yeah. So did you said your grandma came over too with you guys? Yes. Or, okay. So my grandmother originally came to the States with my aunt, my mom's sister. Mm -hmm. um, she started working here. She was going to school in Texas. And so she had to leave my grandfather behind in Iran and then move to Texas with my aunt. Mm -hmm. um, and my aunt would work like waitering jobs and try to pay rent. And it yeah. was just, it, it was really inspiring to kind of hear Hear that from your family yeah. but so then my grandmother stayed here full time and then she became a u.s citizen eventually and then that's when she applied for um like petitioned for my family to come over got it and from the time where my mom applied to when she got approved it was 13 years wow so when you really think about it she originally applied when she was 13 years old and she didn't get approved until my older brother was 13 wow. and i was nine yeah. So it just, is that normal? It takes that long? It does take that long. Mm -hmm. um, there are cases that take over 20 years or some that take over 40 years. Wow. The immigration services are just so backed up and it's always kind of been that way for as long as I've known. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty normal. So you're allowed to live in the States while you're waiting to get approved? Is that how it works? So or? it depends. Okay. Um, if you end up coming on a visa, you can technically overstay and get married to a U.S. citizen and then okay. get a green card. Um, my mom had already traveled to the States like many times on a visa, but my dad had never been here before until okay. we all moved as a family. Yeah. And I had never been here before. Same with my brother. So you came when you were nine? So yes, I, okay. I came here when I was nine. My brother, my older brother was 13. Mm -hmm. um, and then my parents were in their early 40s. Mm -hmm. And we originally moved to Virginia to stay with my aunt and my uncle and my cousins. Um, because we literally like didn't know much. Yeah, right. <laughs> my mom did. Mm -hmm. um, but like my dad and my brother and I didn't really know that much at right. the time about it. Um, so we eventually moved out on our own and everything, but it was a whole process. Um, when I came here, I was in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. It was uh, summer of 2013, and I didn't know how to speak English. Like at all? At all. And when I was back in Iran, they had put me in a lot of like English teaching centers, but I never learned anything, like right. not a single word. Yeah. <laughs> so when Do you I remember <laughs> like at that age, like did you go into it when you were going into school? Mm -hmm. Were you nervous and scared? I remember pretty clearly, okay. like it was yesterday. Yeah. So I remember fourth grade, um, I went to elementary school with my two cousins mm -hmm. that were closer to my age, and then my older brother went to middle school. And so I'll say this before I even get to that. The flight coming off of the 24-hour flight from Iran to America after leaving my family behind, mm -hmm. people who raised me. Like I grew up in a very traditional Persian household. I was always with my grandfather, my dad's side of the family, my grandmother not as much since she was here in America, but everyone from my dad's side was in Iran. So I was always around them growing up. Yeah. Then one day they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna pack up and leave now. Like we're gonna go and completely start over and leave everything behind. Like my friends, you know, my school, my family, like, yeah. what do you mean we're going to go and we're going to live all the way across the world? Like, I was nine years old. Right. But I could really, I was very aware of my surroundings, so I could kind of tell about what's what was going on, but not enough to be able to mentally prepare myself. Mm -hmm. So we say goodbye, we pack up our things, and I remember this part really clearly. Like, I had this whole shelf of, uh, like, dolls growing up beside my bed, and the night when we're packing our stuff, my mom's like, yeah, you can bring like whatever fits in the suitcase. And I'm pretty sure I threw like a whole tantrum that night because yeah. I was like, why can't I bring my toys? Like mm -hmm. we're leaving our family behind. Why can't I bring the stuff that I love that reminds me of home? So packed our stuff. We come here. So if you don't know much about Iran and the Middle Eastern cultures, women have to wear hijabs. It's basically like a cloth covering your hair and you're not supposed to wear any clothing that shows your body. Like not, no skin at all, right? No skin at all. Okay. Um, you can't 
show your hair like people actually get arrested for those things um so coming here when we get off the flight to me everyone was naked right <laughs> like yeah. It was like, oh, you don't have to wear these head coverings anymore. You can wear shorts. You can show your legs. You can show your arms. So even children grow up having to be Once they hit covered. puberty. Okay. Yeah. So girls, once they hit puberty, they do have to start covering their bodies. Um, and then guys, they don't really need to ever do that. But for a girl, I think... I'm not sure if I'm 100% right on this, but I think like eight or nine years old is when you need to start covering okay. like your hair and your body and stuff. Definitely by the age of 13. Mm-hmm. So if it's anywhere before then, but definitely by the age of 13, you have to. So we come here, we land in Virginia and we get off the flight and my aunt, my uncle and my grandmother were waiting for us to take us home. And like I look around and I look nothing <laughs> like everybody around yeah. me. Like... I had black curly hair, like thick curly hair. Mm -hmm. And I look around and everyone's like blonde and has, you know, is super skinny and tiny. And I'm over here like, why don't I look like anybody here? So not only did I look out of place, I felt out of place because Mm -hmm. I couldn't even have a conversation with the people around me. I couldn't even say thank you to like the pilot getting off the flight because I didn't know how to speak the language. And that was a really just scary moment for me because I felt so unwanted and so out of place in general. Yeah. I mean, especially at nine years old, like I can only imagine. I feel like that's a very hard time to go through such a big change. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So going back to like fourth grade is when I started school. My first day of school, I was really scared. I still have the picture. (laughs) <laughs> of like that first day yeah. and like going back to school shopping it was so different because where I was from like you would be buying long sleeves long pants you would have to wear a uniform like private school uniforms right. is what I had to wear and it, but it was completely different than the private school uniform that you would wear here so then going back to school shopping was like oh I can buy shorts mm-hmm. and short sleeve shirts so your parents when you guys came over here your parents were totally fine with like to- like with adjusting to the way that the U.S. was like as far as like dressing and stuff like they were like yeah show your skin whatever no no not at all and you know what it's funny you say that because I struggle with that every single day of my life really up until this point so I've always been my mom is gonna kill me for saying this but she always tells me that I have a sexy body Mm -hmm. oh you do because I'm like I'm not Got a the big skinny. juicy booty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like the tiny like girls with like no leg, you know, right, like no I curves. have big set, like yeah. I have curves. But, and, you know, she would always tell me like, you can't be wearing leggings. Mm-hmm. You can't show your butt. Yeah. And I was like, but everybody else around me does it. Mm-hmm. So why can I do it? And my dad would always tell me it's in our culture. Like you can't you can't wear these like revealing clothes. It's it's not in our culture to be dressing like that. So they didn't mind if you wore like, you know, clothing, but it just like that was from here, but mm-hmm. it just had to be still kind of appropriate per right. se. Exactly. Okay, got it. Appropriate. But like as a <laughs> so cute. She's a nut. She's it's nut hour for her. Come on. <laughs> go, 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 go. So like they just never felt comfortable like going to family gatherings like it was always a fear like I would have to come and show my outfit before walking out the door and kind of like you know look very feminine and like closed off but like you know when you're going to high school going to college everyone's partying everyone's showing their body Mm -hmm. like I was like why can't I do it like what's wrong so you wanted to like you wanted to dress more like Show yeah. some skin. I wanted to feel like I was good enough and that I was going to fit in because yeah. I felt like ever since I came here, like I never fit in. I was mm-hmm. like, well, I don't have the pretty blonde hair. I don't have the skinny thighs. You know, I am not perfect to the beauty standards that I'm seeing around me. So like, why can't I just try to fit in and be like everybody else? You know, it's so like funny, but not, not funny is not the right word, but like sad to me is that. I feel like there's so, and I feel like you would know this, but there's mm-hmm. so many people that want to look like you. Aww. Like, you know, like they want the, the tan skin, the dark hair. Like, I'm an example. Like, I feel, you know what I mean? Like, I've always loved, like, that's like, I just think like girls that are like mm-hmm. tan, dark black hair, like that is just really? beautiful. Yes. So it's funny because that like to say, to hear that, like mm-hmm. you felt that way. Right. You know what I mean? When there's so many people in the world that 
would want your features, you know? And all right, c- bitch, come on. <laughs> She, come on, come on, none of that bullshit. You can just push her down. Do you want to take it so that he doesn't try to drink she's it? She's fine. She just, I don't, I think she was in the mood for Starbucks today. Um, but no, yeah, I just wanted to mention that because I, that is something that is surprising to, not surprising because it's mm-hmm. like, it makes sense to me why you felt that way, especially right. at such a young age and going from such different cultures. But whether you like didn't, whether you know it now or not, like that is a huge thing that I right. feel like, you know, and it's one of those things too that like everybody wants what they don't have. Like if you naturally have straight hair, you want curly. If you have exactly. curly hair, you want straight. So it's like, I feel like that goes for anything. But you know, I just want to let you know. And I'm not saying this Aww. to be like, you know, but seriously, <laughs> it's like you, I love, like I just, I love the way Aww. you look. That's just like, I always thought like, you know, <laughs> pan skin, black hair. Yeah, really? Give, give it to me. <laughs> I never felt confident in myself yeah. because of that. And you know, that caught me to have... Sorry, cut that out. No, you're fine. <laughs> so I never felt confident. Like looking in the mirror, I never felt pretty for a long time. And I would always, like I would wake up every single day, I think in middle school, and I would straighten my hair. Mm-hmm. Like I had thick, curly hair. Yeah. And like in relationships, right? I would, like, I don't think any of my friends really had seen my real natural self because mm-hmm. I was constantly trying to straighten my hair, trying to be like, oh, maybe I should get highlights and lighten my hair up so that it's not this dark black color right. where people can tell that I'm an immigrant. Yeah. I would not even tell people. Like, I'm pretty sure that there were some people around me who were like, oh, she ha- like she can't be from here. Mm-hmm. And I would just be like, no, like I'm from Virginia. Really? You know, like, so you wouldn't even tell people your backstory? No, okay. I wouldn't because it was for me, it was like an embarrassing thing. Yeah. And it wasn't until recently where I actually started to embrace it. I started to embrace the curly hair. I started to embrace the dark hair mm-hmm. and like telling people that, oh, yeah, like, you know, I've had a whole different life, right. you know, and I just I've only be, been here for nine years. I learned how to speak English in sixth grade and not a single person around me can tell. Yeah. You know, and people's jaws actually drop. Right, because I was going to say, I feel like, you know, that's, what's the word? I feel like that's very impressive to people. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, like, because what you, you, so Mm -hmm. you speak two, two, um, not two Englishes, two um, languages, (laughs) right? Languages, yeah. Yeah. So like, I don't know, that's so amazing. I mean, even with jobs, you know what I mean? Like, they're always looking for people that speak multiple languages. And on top of it, I just feel like, once again, I'm going to, reiterate what I said before of 100% I understand as a kid like why and not even just a kid but why anyone would feel that way because it is so different here you know um but at the same time it's like it is something you should be so proud of for so many different reasons you know what I mean it's like it's crazy but continue that's just me (laughs) boosting you thank you (laughs) yeah I just wish like I could go back and just hug that version of me because it's like the pain and then with that came a lot of like depressed moments for me Mm -hmm. especially in middle school I had a lot of moments where I just didn't feel confident in myself at all Mm -hmm. and it was very obvious so then I became kind of depressed into myself a little bit and one of the things that my mom would always tell me is like why do you have to have so many friends like why does everybody need to know you why do you need to have this big number of friends when really none of those people that she called friends were my real friends but it was that validation of like oh you know I can have people around me people like to be around me and I felt better about myself through that because I just you know had that insecurity right and going back to like just being an immigrant you know they talk about so many great opportunities you have when you come to America and you know you can have an amazing education an amazing job and what's not talked about is like these feelings that you have towards yourself because you have these moments of doubt absolutely where you just don't feel good enough you don't feel good enough for anyone right and you know hiding my story for so long and not telling people that I was Iranian like I was genuinely scared of it I was like I don't want to tell people like I just want to be a normal kid did you so do you think you had fear of like being judged yeah okay 100% I had fear of being judged um in high school I left I graduated high school in two years instead of four Mm -hmm. and everyone's like oh my god she must be so smart I just found a different way. Okay. I found a different way. And it wasn't because of I needed to find a different way. It was like I felt like I needed to do something different to validate myself that I was 
good and I could achieve things, you yeah. know, because I was like, oh my God, now I have to build a life here. Mm-hmm. I don't have the connections that everybody else around me has. I didn't grow up in Maryland, you know, like I don't know the CEO of all these companies that can offer me jobs out of college. Like mm-hmm. what if I'm not successful in life? What right. if the fact that my parents came here to give me a better life, I turn into a failure and I let them down and I let myself down. I constantly have this fear in my mind and that's what's caused me to start working at an early age, try to graduate out of high school so quickly so I could go and work. Mm-hmm. Like I started working at a law firm at the age of 16. Yeah, That's not even normal for Americans right you know like when I would tell people that they're like what right like it's like normally like I mean I think I was working at like a little taco shop or something I'm pretty sure and then just like restaurant jobs or something like that exactly yeah exactly I told my mom once I was like I want to go work at Dunkin Donuts I think I was like 14 or 15 Uh she was like I'm not gonna let you go work at Dunkin Donuts yeah as soon as she said this to me this just stuck in my mind I'm like oh my god I need to go like above and beyond to be amazing because when am I ever gonna feel good enough Mm -hmm you know right. and that just is a endless cycle of like doing one thing leading to another thing now I have to go above and beyond on the next thing so you think you still have feelings like that 100 percent, 100 percent. even in my relationships mm-hmm. I'm in my first real serious relationship with someone I really love and I feel like I'm constantly thinking about the future mm-hmm. of oh my god am I gonna marry this guy oh my god I want to be married by this age and have a family by this age so that I can kind of validate my feelings and be like, I'm good enough for this life. I'm good enough to become a wife one day, become a mother one day, or I'm good enough for this career. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm constantly having to go up, like beyond. Yeah. And I never can like step back and just relax. Right. Never. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Like I feel like I have similar feelings like that at times obviously for very different reasons like I feel like I don't I couldn't even tell you what my reasons are I would have to do some deep diving within my (laughs) brain but I I feel like I can imagine to some degree how that feels because even as as what you said like with the relationship thing like there was a period in my life where I like focused on stuff like that so much and like jobs and stuff like that of like always stressing about the future of like okay well I need to make sure even even in situations where I everything in my life is going okay and I'm doing well. I was honestly just thinking about this day in the car where why can't I just sit back and be in the moment and be like, okay, I'm successful right now. I'm doing fine right now. My relationship is fine right now. Just relax for at least a day. But like my brain doesn't work like that either. So it's like, it's that constant almost anxiety I feel like to like do better than you're like than the person you are right now, you know, which I don't think is the worst thing. I feel like, in a way, it provides self-motivation and it keeps you driving forward because a lot of people don't have that. And that's kind right. of what we talked about on the phone of how there's a lot of people, you know, our age that still just want to party and have mm-hmm. fun and don't want to, you know, buckle down on their lives. So right. I feel like it does come with this, with its positives, you know, but it's a fucking pain, you know, to constantly feel like you have to one-up yourself in a way. Do you ever look back and think like, oh my God, I should have just lived for a moment? Oh, all the time. Isn't you know? that like such a painful feeling? Yeah. Because I get that all the time. And I think, yeah, it's that. And then I think too, like, because I'm so stressed about or pent up about my current life and like mm-hmm. about tr- always trying to be better and do better and work harder, I feel like I am I feel this like constant tension within myself and it comes out like towards other things in my life. So it's just- 100%. It's frustrating because then after, after I'll get mad about something that's so right. small, I'm like, okay- it's really not that big of a deal, but it shows me that I have so much constant anxiety in a way. Right. But yeah, it sucks. I always think back and I'm like, I wish I was more present and just stopped right. thinking so far ahead because it's, we don't even know if we get an hour from now, if we get tomorrow. You know what I mean? I know it's kind of cheesy to say, but it's true. So. And you know, everybody always tells me that. They're like, you don't even know if you're going to be alive tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but just in case if I am, I need to know right. exactly what I'm doing. No, I agree. <laughs> Literally the same way. It's like, I'll tell myself that like, no, you know, I could die tomorrow. Like, why right. don't you just relax? But I probably won't die right. tomorrow. So like, maybe, let's make sure everything's in check. Exactly. So, it's like, what yeah. are the chances? Mm-hmm. So I might as well just keep going and going yeah. and going. Yeah. Right. No, I completely get what That's you're funny. saying. Yeah. And it's like, you know, my mom is a workaholic. Mm-hmm. And it's, I don't really even think that it's because she's an immigrant. I literally think that it's just like who she is. It's who she is. Like she works two jobs up until today. And when I tell like my boyfriend that, yeah, my mom, like we can't do plans Saturday or Sunday at 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. Like 8 p.m. on a Saturday or on a Sunday because she's working. She has clients. He, well, your mom's working at 8 p.m. on a Sunday. Yeah. Like 
why Mm -hmm. you know sometimes i tell her i'm like you can just tell people no right like you don't have to keep going like you're gonna burn out Mm -hmm. or she'll just be sick and tired and she'll still say yes and i i'm like why right like why don't you just relax for a moment like you're you know you're in your early 50s like it's time for you to just rewind like if i was in my early 50s i would be thinking about retirement going and living on the beach but in reality when i get there i'm still gonna be racing and racing and racing to the next year i think too part of it is like a fear almost of like of Mm -hmm. what you were saying like a fear of failure or a fear of anything like because I like I was saying in in a certain way I can relate and I feel like when I really think about it it's almost that fear of like well what if I stop making money or like what if I am not successful or I'm not good enough anymore it's like and it's kind of sad because it's like you almost constantly need validation in this world and I feel like even you know the average person it's like no even if you're on social media you're not it's like I feel like everybody in today's day and age is seeking validation. Unless they're like really found within themselves, it's hard not to have that outlook. So it's tough. Because you look on social media and you'll see like 16-year-old girls making millions Mm -hmm. of dollars and you're like, well, I'm busting my ass working a nine to five, still going to school full time or, you know, maybe somebody has a kid and they're raising a kid working a nine to five and they're making like 36 grand a year. Mm -hmm. And you're like, how is it fair that that person is a millionaire for posting on Instagram and then I'm working, you know, 40 hours a week and I don't even make close to that. Yeah. So it's just kind of like this whole comparison game. So I was revving their car. (laughs) Always, always. No, it it is for sure. It's like that's, you know, I always say social media and the comparisons, it it will be the death (laughs) of me and many people. Like it's terrible. It's like even if if you really – do your best not to do it. It's like, I'll, I always tell myself that like, oh, don't go on social media in the morning. So it's mm-hmm. like you start your day good, but then it doesn't really fucking matter if you go on it at 6 a.m. Right. or 6 p.m. If you open it, the comparisons are still going to be there. Exactly. Just, you know, always looking at other people's lives. So on the same note as social media, I know that you do OnlyFans mm-hmm. and it's something that's illegal where I was born. Really? Like you are not allowed to post your naked body yeah. on the internet. Right. Like if you do... I don't even want to like talk about what happens to you. Yeah. But because you you said it's legal. <laughs> is it illegal to not wear, like not be covered as well? Right. So okay. after the Iranian revolution, women had to start covering their bodies. And it's something it's like a whole government talk. But mm-hmm. the people are not very happy with these rules. And they're protesting against it currently, actually, okay. in Iran. But it's something that's kind of been going on yeah. for a very long time. And like things like OnlyFans are banned mm-hmm. in Iran. Yeah. And you know, I always wondered, like, it's so interesting. <laughs> she, she's on a mission tonight for the Starbucks, okay? And Do you she want to take it? She's just... She, she can take it. It's fine. She, I think <laughs> she's just, she just wants attention right now. I'm sorry she keeps interrupting. No, you're fine. <laughs> she's she's, she's opening up to people cute. she really like she really never lovely. used to do this and now she's like maybe i'm a cat lady maybe i used to not be now i am so i kind of see myself being a cat lady in the future if you get one like kitty everybody could be a cat lady she's oh, she's, she's the best cute. well i have to get a persian cat because i'm persian <laughs> yeah she kind of looks like one a little bit but they yeah. i heard they're really sweet cats too they okay are. keep going okay. so it's illegal so yeah, it's illegal. You can't be posting your naked body on the internet. Um, I mean, kind of you would think about it because when you go outside, you really don't see any woman like wearing right. a pair of shorts. And I always kind of think back to them, like how weird it, is it? Like right. over here, I wake up, I want to go get groceries. I'm still in pajamas. I have permission to get out of my house and go to the grocery store. Right. But thinking back there, it's like you have to cover your hair. Like you can't have hair showing. You can't have like sleeves shorter than really the length. What I'm about wearing. makeup? So makeup, I don't know exactly, but I think you shouldn't be wearing like a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Like it can't be some exotic makeup looks that you're wearing. You basically don't want to draw the attention of men to you. So it's like all of those rules that kind of go on. How is like marriage over there? Like is it is it the kind of thing where like your husband is picked for you or you are you allowed to like meet men naturally or how is that? So you are. Mm -hmm. Um. It's not very different than here. Okay. So it really just depends on family to family. Like my family has never done like arranged marriages. Mm -hmm. Like my mom and dad met while they were working. They fell in love and they got married. Like, but it is on a quicker like time span usually. Or at least 
up until eight years ago when I was okay. living there, it was. Like, yeah. you would be dating for under a year before you get married. Okay. But I think it really just depends to each their own, mm-hmm. you know. I think, like, arranged marriage was something that was more common back in the days, not And then as, as far as, like, covering goes with your husband, you're, that's, like, fine when you're in the house, right? If you, yes. Okay, yes. got it. Just not so, outside the house. Exactly, okay. not outside the house. Like, strange guys, mm-hmm. they can't see you. Okay basically like you can, and you can like you could get in trouble like what like what yes. would happen if you, you can get arrested go? okay you can actually get arrested there are some certain jails that they will take you in and they'll make you watch like a course on hijabs mm-hmm. and there has been some incidents where women have been raped or murdered um when they were in these jails yeah. so you can actually go to jail for not covering your body right. it's a part of the it's part of the laws right yeah so it's like kind of coming from that world mm-hmm. to this one i was telling you on the phone it's literally the only way i can describe it is that if i lived up to a certain point in my life i died and then i was reborn yeah because i never so see myself like going back and being able to live that sort of lifestyle right like I can't, I really don't think I would be able to do that now. Right. But just thinking about how I did live in that environment once in my life, it's really interesting to look back on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think too, kind of like what I was saying before is it just gives you a whole different perspective of the world. You know right. what I mean? Which I think is amazing because a lot of people only, they go through life only having one perspective or one way of living. And now- right you know two different ways. You know what I mean? And I think it's amazing too that you even have the ability to say I that that way of life really wasn't for me and I couldn't do it. Like I prefer this, you know? So I think that's really interesting as well. So it's what you're saying exactly. Like it's kind of sucks because you don't always have that permission. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, my mom waited so long for a green card and if she had not applied, like I would still be living in that environment now. And you don't always get that option. So like there are families that come and sneak across the borders and then the parents get put in jails and the children get put in foster care and your family is just separated and torn apart. And, you know, there might be somebody who's really in need of money, but they don't have a work permit. Mm -hmm. and they can't have a job yeah like i had the benefit of coming on a green card becoming a u.s citizen and i love it here but it's like so many other families don't get to have these benefits or their families are just torn apart you never get to see your kids again or you never see your mom again right like how painful is that yeah to be put in jail because you came over wanting a better life right when i was working like i had mentioned too i worked as an immigration paralegal for some time and I was reading some asylum cases and there are some insane cases of families who sneak across because they were being threatened by gangs to get killed and murdered or their kids are murdered. And then the fam, like the parents sneak across because they don't want to get killed. Mm -hmm. So there are stories like that out there that aren't as normal. Like I think when you talk about being an immigrant, there are a lot of different types of stories that you can have because some are extremely wild yeah <laughs> like I'm sure insane i like being an immigrant myself but then talking to other families who had really really hard stories mm-hmm. it makes me upset and it makes me just be 10 times more grateful right because i had the life set up for me yeah you know like one it was of, easier for you in right a way. Right. One of the things that I don't think I'll ever get out of my mind and it made me really appreciate my family. Like, so when we moved out of my aunt's house, we moved into this apartment and, you know, it was our first house in Virginia. So we go shopping for like mattresses and beds and it's super exciting because you're getting like a new room, you're getting everything brand new. I mean, as like a little girl, that's the best thing that you could have. Like I can decorate my room however I want. Mm -hmm. And we had gone to this mattress store and we had bought our mattresses and they're like, okay, they're not going to be delivered for a week. And we're like, okay, well, where are we going to (laughs) sleep? Like, okay. So we had one twin bed and this is like a moment my nine-year-old self will never let go of. So I was super selfish (laughs) when I was a little girl. Like, if you gave me two pieces of candy, I would not give back one. Yeah, you kept both. I kept both. (laughs) I kept both. Like, I was a child. sounds like me now with my dessert. I don't care. I don't either. But it's like, you know, being a little girl and having all these things, like, you know... I always wanted to be spoiled and Mm -hmm. I was, I was very spoiled, but then I had to start over. Mm -hmm. So we're all like in the living room of this little place and me, my brother, my mom and my dad 
I'll have this one twin bed for a week. One bed between all of you. <laughs> one bed. Okay. One bed. Because our mat, and it, like, you know, you hear a lot of stories and they're like, oh, we couldn't afford mattresses or we mm. couldn't afford beds. Like, we had ordered yeah. mattresses and beds, but they just weren't going to be here for a week. Right. We're like, well, what the heck do we do now? Mm. So, of course, my mom and dad and my brother, like, I'm the youngest one, so I'm always spoiled. So I sleep on the twin bed for a week and they all sleep on the, on the floor. Oh, my God. <laughs> That is hilarious. Like my 40 year old parents yeah. and my 13 year old brother. And my brother is like, why does she get to sleep uh-huh. on the bed? Yeah. Like she's just the little girl. Oh my God. But it's a moment I never let go of because mm-hmm. it really just makes me appreciate my family yeah. 10 times more because I'm like, when we had one bed, they were willing to sleep on the floor if I got to sleep yeah. peacefully on the bed. Right. So it's like always it's it's like my parents and my brother are like all I have. Yeah. They're all I have because like of your moments main like this. Core. My main yeah. core. And I like there was, you know, like moving out of your parents' house when I was going through those experiences, like my first lease I ever signed, I canceled it the night before I was supposed really? to move in. Because you just I weren't ready. No. I wasn't. Because I was like, Oh my God, what if something happens to them and I'm not there to yeah. like be with them? It's like they're my team, they're my pack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've just been through so much together that I can never have something happen to them. Right. And That's so sweet, though. Because <laughs> a lot, you know, like, I feel like there's, like, everybody, I think there's a lot of people that are like, oh, yeah, like, I love my family, whatever. But it's really sweet to hear you say that because I feel like not right. enough people, you know, view their family that way. Right. And it's hard to express those feelings the older that you get, yeah. I feel like. Because when you're a little girl, you jump into your parents' arms and you say, like, I love you, dad. I love you, mom. But when you're like, when you're an adult, it's not the same. You can't just open the door and run into your parents' arms and be like, I love you so much. Like, yeah. you know. And life becomes more of life, you know. Like exactly. it starts moving a lot faster and you don't think about, you don't think to stop and do those little things anymore. Exactly. Yeah. And I wish I would do them more often. Mm-hmm. But it's like, just knowing that these are the things that live in my head all the time, yeah. it makes me realize how much I really do love them. Right. Because my dad, like I told you, he had never been to America before. Mm-hmm. And my dad came from, from a, like a bigger family than my mom's side. Yeah. I would personally say he had more siblings. My mom only had a sister. Mm-hmm. And my dad was super close to his family. And then he gets married. He has kids. And his wife's like, we're going to move across the world. Yeah. And I still like can't put my head and my thoughts into how did she convince my father? Because yes, you can have a better life here. You can have a higher paying job or you can have a bigger house or you can have a better education. But how did my mother convince him to leave his family behind? And when my when his father was passing away, my grandfather, I didn't get to say goodbye my brother didn't get to say goodbye. Like we didn't get to physically hug him Mm -hmm. and say goodbye to him. And that is something that always stays with me. Yeah. And it's something that I, if I could change one thing, like my biggest regret of this entire like lifespan that I've had is just that one thing. Right. If I could just go back and hug him and tell him that I love him and thank him for everything. Like my grandfather was my biggest fan growing up. Mm -hmm. Like even when I was a little kid and then he never got to see me grow up. Yeah. How, like did it's you keep in contact hard. at all so we did keep in contact like you can always video chat and things like that but i never got to go back my right. parents have gone back a few times but i have not gotten the chance to go back yet would you you think to visit at all yeah. i would okay. i would but there are a lot of things that are going on there at the right. moment there was one time i remember that i called my aunt from my dad's side and I cried to her and I said I'm gonna move back Mm -hmm. like I can't take it anymore I want to move back and she had to sit on the phone and actually convince me not to yeah I I was like 14 or 15 at the time Uh like I was like it's just not worth it I want to be back with my family I miss my family and after that it was like a little bit before that was my was when my grandfather passed away and when he passed away like everything just kind of hit real Right. Of like, oh my God, I can't just like book a flight and go back home. It's not that easy. Yeah. Because of also all the laws that are going on about women. Like what if my skin is showing and then they put me in jail and then right. what's going to happen then? You know, yeah. so I do want to go back. It's just not as easy as I would yeah. hope. And you probably would have to just figure out the right time for, you know, you and like when would be the right time to go back over there and everything like that. Right. Yeah. So when you you want to go back to the schooling Mm -hmm. when you were so you went in at fourth grade 
Yes. And how was that when you actually were in school? Because I know you said Mm -hmm. you remember the picture that you took and you were like really nervous, right? Yeah. It's with me and my brother. Okay. And it's so funny. It's on my grandmother's Facebook. It's been there Uh ever since 2013. That is funny. Like every time I want to go back to that life, I just pull Mm -hmm. up her Facebook and I just see these pictures. Yeah. But yeah, so fourth grade I went in. I couldn't speak English, like Mm -hmm. not even a word. So what would happen? And this is where I really fell out of place is the whole class would go on in front of me and then there was a little table and chair in the back of the classroom for students who needed help speaking English. So there was this one teacher, like I think they called him like Esau or something like that. Mm-hmm. And we were in the back of the classroom, whatever the professor or the teacher was saying, she would have to point to pictures. She couldn't speak Farsi. So she had to point to pictures and I would have to try to understand what that guy is saying from the pictures that she's pointing to in a whole different language and this was during the actual (laughs) class yes okay during the actual class and then they would also pull me out of class to work with me um on the side as well and so one of the most impressive things i ever did as a third third not 13 year old nine year old was i passed the esol exam i think in a year Mm -hmm. and all the other kids around me failed it i was the only one i was in that like studying group for a year and then I passed it to go to the middle school that I wanted to go to okay. um and what made it even harder was I started fourth grade in Virginia but then we moved to Maryland mm-hmm. so then I start fifth grade so fifth grade was here in Maryland yes okay I started fifth grade in a whole new school right. so I had already been brand new to fourth grade I, mm-hmm. I couldn't even understand the kids around me and now I had to move to a whole different state meet a whole different group of people who were not as nice because they were older and the older that you get the meaner that you are to the people yeah. that you know you don't really fit you. in with yeah. right so i had to start there and so within the span of moving to america starting fourth grade to the end of fifth grade i had switched three schools so not only did i already not fit in it was a constant battle of okay now new school yeah like a reset almost. reset like yeah. we got to do that all over again mm-hmm. so basically fourth grade I couldn't understand anything I don't think I learned a single thing that whole year about what the teacher was teaching um and that was really hard because that that is kind of when they start to teach you the basics for when you're going to middle school and stuff um so was that exam you took Mm -hmm. was that like did you have somebody helping you with that or that was all on your own that was all all on my own it was like an english exam to say that you no longer need somebody to help you um to like translate you had at that point you were able to understand more Yes. Okay. Got I it. was able to understand more. I was watching like Netflix shows. Okay. There are like a few like really cute instances that I remember. So mm-hmm. one time I was watching like Shake It Off or something on Netflix. And this guy like made a funny joke about when the woman was telling him to basically like shut his shut his mouth. Mm-hmm. And the next day in class, I tell the kid that I had a crush on, this Asian kid who was like teaching me English. Uh-huh. I told him, I was like, ask me this, ask me this. And he asked me. And then I like responded with the insult. And uh-huh. then he gets a professor and the whole class turns around and like, circles around me to hear me say it because they were all so proud of me oh my god for like having a funny funny insult to say back to this kid Mm -hmm. and that was really fun and at that school I had my cousins going there with me like you know I felt like I had people right but then when we completely moved to Maryland I didn't have anyone okay so at that point I was completely alone Mm -hmm. and it was nicer because I could understand more but I still didn't have anyone that I could really call my friend yeah and that's something that like really sticks with me to this day is right. like I've never had that best friend to like say oh we've been friends since elementary school and yeah. you know we're inseparable mm-hmm. so right mainly because I didn't feel like I could fit in yeah so were you so you were at the same school from fifth grade to when or does it stop at fifth grade I can't remember. yeah it, it starts at-, at fifth grade okay and then you go to middle school so you were you did for so then did you change again Yep, I changed again for middle school. Oh my, so four times. Yeah, okay. four times. Yep, you're completely And then high correct. school and then co- mm-hmm. college too. Yeah. Like, okay. And college, geez. like if I could count how many schools I've changed, mm-hmm. but even in high school, I changed twice because I didn't graduate from the wow. school that I started at. And then I 
went to college. And when I started college, I started working. I started college at 16. Mm -hmm. And then I started working at the law firm at the same time. And then when I was like, okay, I'm going to leave this job. I was driving 45 minutes to work and back every single day, like since I was 16 years old, which is a lot. Like Mm -hmm. it was just when I had gotten my license. But again, I felt like I needed to do something crazy to validate my feelings and say that I could accomplish big things. So I started working at a law firm not the healthiest work environment I've been in. <laughs> yeah. So I started working at that law firm. And then after I stopped, I transferred again to a different college. Okay. So it's like constantly moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. So yeah. when you were in middle school, how was that with friends? Did you Were you able to make a lot of friends or did you mainly stick to yourself, would you say? So it was tough. I remember fifth grade. They came into our classroom to talk about how middle school is gonna be and it's like oh you get lockers you can you don't have to walk in a single file line and I remember this moment where they're like oh yeah and you can sit at lunch with whoever you want and all the kids were like happy and Mm -hmm. shouting like oh my god I can sit with my friends and you know have lunch with my friends like it was crazy to them and I kind of just looked around and I was like oh shit like who the fuck am I gonna sit with who am I gonna sit with like I don't have any friends here I had like one or two friends in our neighborhood but no one that I actually felt like I could relate to. Mm -hmm. Like my friend at that time was this like American blonde girl that I looked nothing like and I never felt like we could understand each other. So like, did I really have any friends? Yeah. Not really. Okay. So those were some of the moments where I really struggled. And then middle school too, like I'm pretty sure I like excused to go to the nurse a bunch of times Mm -hmm. because I didn't want to go to lunch alone. Okay. And I had people who knew me and were friends with me. I just didn't feel comfortable around them. Okay. I felt like they were constantly looking at me and judging me. Right. And it felt really uncomfortable. And that was when I started to aggressively like straighten my hair and try to Mm -hmm. fit in and try to wear shorter shorts because the girls around me were doing that. So all through middle and high school, you were still telling people you were from Virginia. So not really like I wasn't really talking about okay. it. Um, yeah, it was never the, something that I had talked about. Yeah. I think one time in elementary school I had kind of said that mm-hmm. um, just to like because this guy was like giving me a hard time mm-hmm. and I couldn't really understand like what he was saying because yeah. they would talk about a bunch of different things and I'd be like, what, the, what are you talking about? Like right. I, I could barely speak English. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't really hiding it, but okay. I wasn't embracing it either. Got it. And I sticked to not embracing it until I started working at the law firm but I only embraced it in my workplace so still at school I was not really talking about it really didn't start talking about it until I started dating my current boyfriend Mm -hmm. like that's when I that's the first time I ever started to be like oh my god because he had looked at me with like curly hair one time I did not show this man my curly hair until 10 months into the relationship, possibly a year. And that's pretty recent. Right. That is pretty recent. And I was just so scared the entire time. I was like, what if he doesn't love me anymore? Like all his ex-girlfriends are blonde. Like why, what if he thinks I'm ugly and not attractive? And then he looked at me, he was like, wow, I love your hair. It's beautiful. And like his, I love his mom. His mom is blonde and she saw it and she was like, I love your hair. And I was like, oh my God. Like I actually feel happy in myself for the first time about being this like Persian girl and not hiding it from people. Yeah. And it's a lot worse when you're like getting older and older because you start to kind of lose a sense of yourself Mm -hmm. because the stories that you're telling other people, you start to believe that. Right. And all of a sudden, like I felt like at some point I forgot who I was. Right. Because I just didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. And you were trying to almost like fit in to match the people around you. Exactly. Yeah. That's wow. Yeah. That's that's great though <laughs> that, you know, you're finally opening up. So you, in other relationships you were in, you said that was just like, you never really. No, I wasn't in any serious relationships okay. before So this then. is like your first serious yeah, one. Yeah. This is my it. first serious relationship. Okay. And before then it was, you know, like you talked to guys and stuff, but it was never something I brought mm-hmm. up. Never okay. something I brought up. Like, never talked about it. If it was brought up, I would change the conversation. Yeah. I just didn't feel like I would be, like, all the other girls competing. Right. You know? Like, yeah. So, with the law firm, you went in the law firm at 16. Mm-hmm. And were you still in high school at this point? Or you were graduated? Graduated. Okay. So, yes. you were in college at the same time? Yes. What did you go to college for? So, I started my college with legal studies. Okay. Um, so, throughout this entire story, I... Th- 
I was living to become a lawyer. Okay. So because a lawyer, when you tell people like, oh my God, you're an attorney, they're like, oh, you're so smart. But really I loved, like I loved it from a very young age. I was like, I want to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I was really passionate about going to law school for female sexual assault. I wanted, like I had this whole envision and dream about starting a firm, having like psychologists on site and being able to like talk to these victims, how they're supposed to be talked to, like, you know, making sure that they feel like someone's here their story and then so at 16 I was like well I have to go start working at a law firm to really validate this feeling and be like okay I really want to do this so I went to school for legal studies and I was working to get my paralegal certificate at the time so I started working at this firm and it didn't take me a long time to realize that I no longer wanted to be an attorney just because of the many, many interactions that I had with a lot of male attorneys that made me feel so uncomfortable in myself. Are you and willing to talk about them? Yeah. Well? Okay. Yeah. Like I had this one instance. It was I was at a holiday, holiday party and it was my whole firm. And my boss really wanted to introduce me to this one attorney in particular who had like referred us cases. And the dude was so drunk. He was looking at me like up and down and calling me sexy and just like being so inappropriate. And I was 17 years old. Jesus. I wasn't even a legal age. Yeah. And like there were a couple more like instances like that mm-hmm. where I was just like, I don't want to deal with this. I'm yeah. not going to be happy. Like, right. I don't want these guys to look at me up and down and make sexual comments about me and cat call me. Mm-hmm. I just didn't want to deal with it. I had a very interesting experience working at the law firm. So then it didn't take me a long time. And also, I did not like what I was studying in school. Okay. I did not like legal studies. I failed out of two classes and had to retake them. Mm-hmm. So I just didn't enjoy it. So then I switched it over to business. Okay. Yeah. So how long were you at the first law firm for? I was at the first law firm for a year and a half almost. Okay. And yeah. then you just decided to quit? I decided to quit. Okay. Very recently. I yeah. hope I. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It was very recently. I decided yeah. to leave. Um, I wanted a really, I wanted to be able to look up to somebody. And if I, if that was going to be an attorney, I really wanted like a mentor mm-hmm. and I wasn't really receiving that. Yeah. And it just wasn't fulfilling my needs anymore. So then right. I had to move on to the next chapter. Okay. Also, like I had also switched schools. So I was studying like 10 minutes away and Mm -hmm. that firm was 45 minutes away right so it just didn't line up anymore didn't line up anymore um but when you were at this firm Mm -hmm. you was this when you had like experience with different stories and stuff? yes okay yes so there was this one story in particular that always sticks with me and it was this uh girl And, you know, when you're talking to illegal immigrants, they're always super fearful. Like when you first pick up the phone and call them, they're so scared because they're like, oh, my God, what if I'm going to get kicked out of this country? Some of them have children and the children are U.S. citizens, but the parents are not. And so the children can't petition for their parents to get a green card because they're under age. Okay. so the parents would be illegal um, and it's just a lot of scary moments for them. This one client that we had in particular had an asylum case and I can't go that in detail with it because it's mm-hmm. still in progress, but basically she, her sister was murdered back in her home country and then she had snuck across the border with three other sisters mm-hmm. and they were illegal. So they don't, they don't have work permits. If they're sick, they have to go to the hospital, but if they get caught, they can get kicked out of the country. Right. So it's stories like that where it's just like really close to my heart because when you and I think about it, we're like, oh, you know, we get sick, we just go to the doctor, everything is fine. But these people can't do that. Mm -hmm. Like they don't have health insurance. If they tell the doctor, like I don't know if there's any rules with that, but like they're afraid. They're not even going to go to the hospital if they're stabbed because it means they might get kicked out of the country. So yeah, basically this these three sisters, one of them was murdered. Um... And there was a gang chasing them back in their home country. But the grandmother was behind all of this. Really? Yeah. So the grandmother from her dad's side was behind all of this. And she had poisoned the sister and had attempted to poison all three other sisters that were still alive and the mother. Because the grandmother believed that um, their mother had killed, murdered the dad. Oh, my God. So... 
It's like hearing those stories, you don't know what to say. Yeah. You know, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. And it makes my experiences just like not even comparable to the two. But it's like, I still get it because she's an immigrant and I'm an immigrant. Mm -hmm. And there are just so many different lines inside the word of like immigrant. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I don't know if there's anything else that I had. I have one I have one more thing. Yeah. I was gonna say, going back a little bit, mm-hmm. um, I know when we were on the phone, we kinda talked about and I know you talked about a little bit how you felt like you wanted to, you know, keep you were a very high achiever. Is that the word? High achiever. Um, but I know on the phone when we were talking, you were mentioning how everyone in high school and college and even mm-hmm. now around you you know, is still like in the partying phases and that just doesn't feel like you. Right. So I wanted you to touch on that a little bit because I feel like there's a lot of people, you know, that can relate in that sense because it, it almost feels normal for us to, you know, when you're at, when you're between the ages of what, fucking 20, 25, mm-hmm. 26, or seven, whatever it may be, that, you know, you party, you go out, you have fun, you're not really, you don't have to settle down technically. Like these are supposed right. to be your fun years. But there's a lot of people that can't relate to that and they mm-hmm. – don't care for that. So I kind of wanted you to touch on that because I feel like there's people that could relate. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So I've never been like a party girl. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's something that's always been a part of me. Like I was never forced to stay at home. I just never liked to party. Right. Um, I did like having a lot of friendships, but like going out and getting drunk and wasted and, and like hooking up with dudes and things like that, I was just never, it was never in me. Yeah. But what I do see a lot around me is that people who also relate to it not being in them and really don't want to do it are just so pressured into it. Yeah. And it's because they also want to have that same feeling of like fitting in that I wanted to have. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's never been hard to say no, but I know a lot of people around us, like around our age, they're like, well, this is what I'm supposed to do in my 20s. Mm-hmm. Like I'm supposed to party. And going back to what you said, like we kind of look back sometimes and we're like, well, I wish I would have just relaxed. Mm -hmm. There has never been a moment where I've looked back and I'm like, oh, I wish I would have gone to that party and gotten shit face drunk. Yeah. Never. And the thing is, too, I I think that drinking and smoking and all of that stuff for recreational use, it becomes so like such a part of a social thing Mm -hmm. that people I mean, even to this day, like, I mean, I drank the last like last weekend, but that was the first time in six months. But <laughs> oh, that's really um, good. Yeah. So yes. I like I tr- I've been trying not to for many different reasons. Um, but you know, like my boyfriend will still say to me, like, "Come on, let's have a wine night." Mm-hmm. And honestly, like for me, it's like it's just not worth it anymore. Right. But I think for a lot of people, it's just it's a fun social thing. Like even if it isn't a party, it becomes something where it's something to do, right. which is honestly really unfortunate because you can have the same time that you would have without alcohol you know and it's I kind of noticed that too that it it becomes like a pressure thing and even if someone's not directly pressuring you of course there's a part of me that is like I I wish that there was any like ounce of me that wanted to and I'd be like yeah sure let's have a wine night but I don't want to exactly you know what I mean and it's it sucks because like I said so many people it's so normal like it's normalized of like oh let's go out for drinks or let's have wine to relax and it's like it's it makes it tough especially at our age because that's what a lot of or at least most people are doing and if it's not your thing it's not your thing exactly you know? what you said and it makes it hard especially like for me I'm in, I'm still in college and yeah. still to this day I'm like oh my god I don't have any friends in college and it's not because I don't know anybody and it's because everyone I'm like oh let's do something oh the first thing to yeah. their mind is let's go out to the bars yeah let's go get drunk let's go you know party or whatever it is but it always involves alcohol yeah and personally like I'm not into it. Right. Like, I'm just not into it. My boyfriend tells me, he's like, you're in college. You have to go out once a week. Mm -hmm. And I dragged him out with me a couple of times, like, to this party, like, a couple weeks ago. We get there. Everybody is already drunk. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. But, like, him and I, like, we didn't want to drink. Right. You know? Like, we didn't care to drink. But the funny thing is, anyone who saw us right away was like, are you guys, you guys are not having fun. Right. Like you're not having fun. We're like, we are having a great time just sitting here and talking. Mm -hmm. But it's like associating having fun with getting drunk and drinking or smoking. And it's really hard when you don't want to do those things because you just feel so left out. Yeah. And a part of me thinks that in the future when I'm 30, I'm going to look back and I'm going to be like, oh, I wish I would have partied a little bit harder in high school or in college. 
but I hope I never get that type of feeling. Yeah, and and honestly, I feel like you won't. Like, I feel like it's one of those things that, like, it either happens or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And if it happens, great. If it doesn't, great, too. Because, I mean, I feel like you're so ahead of the game. You know what I mean? And you really are trying to build a life for yourself a lot earlier than the people around you, which I think is amazing. Um, So, and even if you get those feelings, just fucking do it at that time in life. You know what I mean? Go out (laughs) and do whatever. It's never too late. Yeah, like, I wouldn't ever look back. Because at the same time, it's like, It's not like you're not going like you went and it's like you the choice is there. And if you didn't want to take it in that moment, that's all that should matter. Like if you look back, it's like you should just remember in that moment I didn't want to do it. And that's that, you know. Exactly. And, you know, I always think about the family that I still have in Iran because I have cousins there. Like I got a call from my one of my younger cousins one time and she was trying to like have me petition for her to come here and Mm -hmm. start a business and all these things. And I always just like keep thinking back to them. I'm like, I am the only young girl from my dad's side of the family who's in America and I have the chance to put my name out there and have this amazing story at a young age or I can just go to this party tonight yeah you know I can just go and just get shit face drunk like it'll be fine I'll regret it tomorrow but doesn't matter but when you think about that and you're like I want to be a role model for her and I want to be a role model for my future self right I want so many other people too, exactly you know? and make that like nine-year-old Diana proud who like didn't fit in and now it's yeah. like I really don't care if I fit in or not right I don't because I'm happy with where I am I'm happy with who I am I'm confident in myself and it took me a long time to get here I was gonna say do you think that came with time or 100%. like was there experiences you think in particular I think a little bit of both okay a little bit of both it did also come with getting validation from like other people mm-hmm. of oh my god you're so smart you did this or oh yeah. my god you worked at this place at a young age like I think that was also a big part of it I would be lying if I said it wasn't yeah. because it made me feel like maybe I am special maybe right. I don't need to be like everybody else mm-hmm. because I can always go back to that life that's right. always there, you know? Yeah. I can always quit my job today and go back to that life tomorrow. But what about all these other goals and dreams that I have? What about my family back in my home country who are looking out and they're like, oh my God, like, you know, she's going to go and she's going to put our name out there, Yeah, you know? And I want to make them proud. Right. I want to make that nine-year-old girl proud who didn't feel imp- like she felt so out of place. And I was seeking validation at a very young age yeah well I think it's absolutely amazing because not only for yourself and like when you reached out to me and you even kind of gave me like a idea on the phone of you know what you wanted to talk about on here I think that it's so inspiring to so many people for so many different reasons and I think too whether it even just be the fact that you didn't want to party and you want to get ahead and just and work and focus on yourself. There's a lot of people that can relate to that, whether it's you not feeling like you fit in because of the way that you looked or your body or anything. There's so many people that feel that and relate right. to it. And I think that, you know, hearing it from so many different perspectives is what makes someone feel like, wow, I'm not alone because not everybody's story is the same. You know what not I mean? Everybody's going to have a different story. But I think the fact that you are at a place in your life that – you feel so confident, which you should be because you've, it sounds like you've accomplished so much already. Um, but the fact that you feel that way within yourself now, and then even to come on here and talk about it, it's like, it's incredible. And I say that to people, you know, when they come on too, because it's like, it takes a lot of balls to like come and sit here and tell your story. And because it's almost like opening yourself up to be vulnerable and just, you know, tell whoever's listening half most of them you don't know probably any of them but you know it's just like you you tell your story and I I think that it's amazing because you're really looking at it from the perspective of I want to help people and I want to get it out there and just let people know that like they're not alone and also just to make people aware too I think of what does go on in other countries and how how lucky we are that we do have you know the ability to really at the end of the day leave when we want dress how we want and and not have any type of consequences for that so I think that it's really important that you talked about that as well because I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't realize you know that that even goes on so right it's not something that you think about twice Mm -hmm. like when you're leaving your house in the morning and you don't step back and you're like oh you know maybe I shouldn't wear short sleeves today because someone's gonna see my arms yeah it's not it's really not something that you think about twice Mm -hmm. I don't think about it twice and going back to what you said about other like you know inspiring other girls like my goal is 
for a young girl for another young immigrant to be able to listen and be like I can feel like I'm enough yeah. I don't have to constantly look it in the mirror and like pick my body and my face apart because I don't look like the next person right. I don't look like the beauty standards and exactly what you said when you were like telling me that you like the dark hair mm-hmm. and the tan but it's like I would never believe that yeah because I look at myself and I'm like oh I don't feel pretty mm-hmm. like I don't I don't think I look pretty yeah so Hi. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the thing too is like kind of like what I was saying before as well of, you know, everybody to a degree wants what they don't have. So it's like there's times where like and I feel like I come off and I've said this so many times just online that I come off as a very confident person. But there's so many times that I look in the mirror or I get pissed off with like an outfit I'm trying on and I will Mm -hmm. literally literally say out loud, I'm fucking ugly. And I'm like, you know, no one would really know that you like feel these things, no. you know, or think these things about yourself. But I feel like it's so common and it sucks. It's sad, but it's normal, especially with the way that life is today with social media and just constant comparisons. But at the same time, I think it's a, it's important to know that everybody's going to have their days where they don't feel confident, but not to be cheesy, but everyone's unique and beautiful in their own ways, 100%. you know, and everyone has their own <laughs> things that make them special. And and the craziest thing is, is like, this is really hard to remember, but what really makes you remember a person 99% of the time isn't even the way they look. It's how they are as a person and, exactly. you know, who, who they are, what they do, how they treated you, you know, all of these things. It's like the root of the person and everything on the outside is just an external shell. Right. And I feel like that's something that everyone should remember because even though, like, I mean, we see it in the fucking movies, you know, Mm -hmm. school is rough. It's terrible. And I can't even imagine, like, the bullying and stuff that goes on to people. And, you know, if people already feel, you know, the way that you felt of already feeling not like that they didn't fit in or they might not speak the language. And then on top of that, getting bullied by fucking asshole kids. Excuse right. my language. No, I but agree with you. But you know what I mean? It, it's it's horrible. And I can't even imagine. So I know that these words, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's all words. And it's like, even though you could say it, you might not always feel it. Right. But it really is true. And I, I think that the older that you get, you know, and the more experiences that you have and the more Mm -hmm. you achieve in life too, I think you really begin to realize like, wow, I did that and I'm perfect the way I am, even though I might see some flaws. Like, you know, it's at the end (laughs) of the day, you're fine. Yeah, We all do. And one thing that I forgot to touch on was how, for me, I think it's really easy to look around and when you have these feelings, especially when they start at a young age of not feeling enough and needing to be validated, Mm -hmm. it's interesting how those same people get into some very abusive relationships yeah that's another thing that I didn't really talk about is even like the pattern of the people that you choose when you're not feeling confident in yourself versus where you are feeling confident in yourself it's completely different and you see people in some really really abusive relationships and where they're really struggling to find themselves and it really brings them down even more but all of that kind of blends into the rest of your life. You can't just get into a relationship and be like, okay, well, if this person loves me, then I love myself Mm -hmm. and use that for validation. So for me personally, up until the point where I actually became confident in myself and my story, I couldn't be in a serious relationship with anybody. Right. Because if I was, I would just be seeking validation from them. I wouldn't be with that person because I love them. I would be with them because they make me feel prettier. Yeah. Or they make me feel like I'm good enough. Yeah. And a lot of people go into those relationships and then you see them falling apart later on in life. Yeah. When they look in the mirror and they're like, I don't love myself. Why don't I love myself? Who is this person that I'm with? Like they can't even recognize themselves or their loved ones or the person that they are dating. So that's another thing is how these people kind of go into relationships and marriage later Mm -hmm. on in life and then having children. It's like you really have to get to a point where you – are happy with the person that you are and you're yep. at peace with her and that's and true you're yeah, not that's, fighting against yourself anymore yeah that's definitely true and it's like whenever like everybody will always tell you like you can't truly love someone else until you love yourself and it's it's so it's it's very true and everything you said is it's so accurate and it's like how if you're so unhappy or confused or not found within mm-hmm. yourself it's like you're so focused on that And the val like you're just like praying that this person you're with just like fills that void. And if they don't, you feel worse. And if they do, it's like a split second of like, oh, okay, like I can relax now. Yeah, I'm good. But then if something else happens, then you're back to, you know, square A. So that definitely is something that, you know, is 
is crucial that, you know, you just really have to get to a point where, like you said, that you really love yourself and you accept your story and you accept who you are and you're proud of it. You know, like everybody has shit that they might look back on and be like, oh, well, I wish it was kind of different, but like it's not. And yet at this point in life, like you should just own it. You know what I mean? And if most of the time too, I want to say if you own your story, Nobody can like say nothing that anyone says can we'll actually bring you like down. yeah and the, right. nobody can take it away from you like it, it's your story if somebody has something bad to say about it like that is their problem and that's you know kind of what, what I was thinking about before coming on I'm like oh my god what if there's a comment about me and it's like oh my like it's about my story mm-hmm. and it's and I feel upset and I you know get offended from it but it's like I've gotten to the point where I'm actually proud of the person yeah. I am and if I could re live this life I wouldn't change a damn thing right because it's turned me into the girl that I am today and I'm proud of her right I'm proud of her for like watching her family go through that I'm proud of my parents for restarting their life in a brand new country like across the world from their family right I'm proud of all that and right. you know sometimes I think about it and I'm like what if I get married one day and I don't have enough family members to to like invite to my wedding Mm -hmm. like isn't that such a terrible feeling where you're like everybody has like their cousins and their aunts and their uncles I don't have that many I have a really small family too like my main family my core family very very small and then my mom has like really good friends of her so it Mm -hmm. kind of like spurs off to like family friends exactly but like yeah my family's like really small too for the most part but honestly I think it's it's better that way because you don't feel like you have to like keep in touch with all these different like people you know it's like you have your main like you said your main pack and that's it um which I think is meaningful and it's nice and I want to say too that I know I kind of already said this but based on like comments and stuff first of all if anybody has like bad comments, <laughs> you can look at this girl right here. But no, it's like the other thing is too, like these people, and this is just something to keep in mind in general in life, mm-hmm. you know, they're hiding behind a screen right. and they're writing something because they're so fucking miserable with their own lives. Mm-hmm. And also like they're not sitting on my podcast no. fucking telling their life story <laughs> and, you know, inspiring others and helping others. And also it's an, that's like another achievement for you is like publicly telling your story. That's like right. a big thing. You know what I mean? And it's not – it's also – not really a common thing. Like it's really, it's a cool opportunity. Not saying I'm fucking Joe Rogan yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> but, you know, it's still, a, it's a big thing for somebody to actually want to put that out there and talk about it. So right. honestly, thank you so much for thank coming you. on. I loved your story. I think it's amazing. <laughs> I think that it's really inspired. How old are you? 18. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Got that one out. 18. <laughs> yeah. Oh my she god! Bursted. Yeah, I told you. I was like, I, you know what's, what's funny fun though? If that's it. my reaction, I guarantee that when, if like you know, when people are like, they're gonna be like, wait, what? 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 Right? No, because you're yeah. so. Why? And I, I think I was talking to Claudia after I got off the phone with you, and I was mm-hmm. like, she is so wise beyond her years. Like it does, you know what yeah, I mean? My ears are so years are so low. Yeah, like it's yeah. just it's wild though because you no one would think no. that you're 18 years old and you should be so proud of yourself. <laughs> Act like actually that's that is wild something that it's like when I tell people they're like get, the, get out. Like, you don't want to no. know what I was doing at 18. And see that's what I'm t- that's the thing. It's right? like trying to fit myself into yeah. what everybody else is doing at 18. Right. 18 year olds are still in high school. Yeah. Like when, I, when I tell people, yeah, I'm going to graduate college in like a year and a half, I'm trying to push it up to a year. Like, you know, I worked a lot. Like, it's like, what? No, you must be so smart. It's like, no, it was never about being smart. It was yes. never about studying hard. I still to this day, I'm not that person. Right. But it's like feeling like I need to go above and beyond. Oh my, a little so. wizard over here. <laughs> She's a fucking wizard. <laughs> no, that's that's incredible. Her really. reaction is priceless. That I wish is the camera was on her. Wild. Oh yeah. my god. You might have told me that on the phone, but I, I really did forget. So that's what I told you is like I've lived half of my life. Yeah. In a whole different world. Right. And the other half here. And I, to me, I'm still a kid. You really are. Like to me, I'm still a kid. God. So it's not that crazy to like think about it. Imagine like, when she's 25 or 30. I can't like you're gonna be like the fucking president or something. <laughs> can't i wasn't born here well <laughs> there there i go again with my comments when i don't know what i'm talking about but you can be my I president okay it. i looked into it that's why i'm making that yeah no but seriously though like 
I seriously <laughs> see some big fucking leadership roles for you over there. I mean, I that's hope wild. So. so what do you? So you mm-hmm. said you don't want to be an attorney anymore, right? Don't want to be an attorney. So what is like? What's your goal now? So I actually have um, a government position lined up. Uh-huh. Uh, so I might be going into that in the f- next few months. Okay. But I would like to go into like a good company and be on their like leadership board. I okay. love being on the leadership board. Like, yeah. I like wow. managing people. It's it's yeah. bad, but it's like I like being able to see. I don't want to sit down and actually do the work. I like mm-hmm. being able to manage people. That's why I wanted to start my own firm for so long. Yeah, I wanted wow. to just be boss lady. But no, I boss definitely see, no, I definitely see it. I mean, the fact that you're already starting so young, I just feel like. I mean, I can't express it enough. I just feel like you really are so ahead of the game. Even like it seems like in every category, which is just so inspiring. So if you're 18 and watching this, this is who you should be looking up to. Um, no, it's always like the battle against yourself. That's true. It's always battle against my, against yourself. But it's good to look up to people. Yeah, I look up to you. It's okay. No, don't. <laughs> don't do that. I like, li- no, but oh I like listening to people. I really yeah. wanted to start a podcast at one point yeah. in time because I, I like listening to people's mm-hmm. stories. And yeah. when I saw that you were listening to people's stories, mm-hmm. I was like, I like this. It's I was- a, it's, I think it, I think for me, it's one of those things that I'm proud of it because it's, it holds a lot more value mm-hmm. than my OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's why it's like, I'm proud of it because of that reason, because, you know, it, it might not be getting, you know, the most views and stuff like that at the moment. Cause it like everything takes time, especially with a rebrand. But at the same time, it's like, I'm so proud of what I'm putting out and I'm so proud of the stories. It's and so I, yeah. And I love to hear and I love to learn. And yeah. now like, I know this, all of this stuff about you when like, there was a point that I'm walking into the gym and I just yeah. see, you know, a random girl. So it's mm-hmm. like, now I know your life story and I know so much more and it's so easy to judge a book by its cover you never know Definitely. someone's story like I would never know any of any of that right you know so it's just it's really crazy it is crazy but it's really yeah. interesting when you listen to people's stories it it's is. like you're the author of your own book so like mm-hmm. if you are 18 19 freaking 30 like yeah. you it's always the race against yourself you're not racing with anybody else there mm-hmm. wasn't anybody else that i looked up to and i was like oh they graduated early right or oh they started working at a law firm at an early age so i should do it mm-hmm. it was it was really just in myself yeah so well yeah. that's amazing but thank you so much for <laughs> coming you. you were great i loved it you're Aww. amazing you're awesome amazing. <laughs>